video for uh, like uh, Italian um, meatloaf, uh, but it's going to be um, more like a bit like a Swiss roll roulade type. Is it roulade? Roulade type thing where we're going to do uh, like mince meat, and then we're going to uh, layer on some um, my home cured bacon, which has been in the fridge and dried out for. Uh, a year and it's turned into um, like a really cured, really nice cured uh, bacon. Uh, and it, I sliced it really thin on a baking slicer, so it, we, we've, we've done we've done that. Delicious. I tried some. Um, so we're going to uh, layer that on top with some uh, cheap mozzarella. It's just the uh, cheap supermarket stuff. Um, I kind of did a little bit of research, and um, before I did too much research, I kind of thought, well, let's not just use mince. Let's make a like a meatball kind of mixture and use that as the uh, mince so it's got more flavour in that type of thing so I'm going to use uh, the, kind of the recipe that I use for, for um, my meatballs that I was kind of like faffing around with so I think there is it's an ish kind of recipe I think there is uh, 1.2 kilos worth of I'm trying to remember this 1.2 kilos worth of uh, pork mince in here it's not that fatty um, I was doing, I've done something else with the rest of the pork belly. So it's pork belly that minced up. There's a hundred grams worth of uh, breadcrumbs in there. Uh, it's my own um, sourdough, which I've, uh, it was frozen, so I've just grated it so it's nice and fine. Um, there's a parsley. Um, it's that much parsley, so I don't know what it kind of weighs. 50 grams, 50 grams worth of parsley, maybe. No, not, not 25 grams worth of parsley, I reckon. Uh, 200 grams of finely um, sliced onions and 100 grams worth of uh, just cheap Italian hard cheese uh, from the supermarket. And we're going to put some salt and pepper in and we're going to put an egg in as well. That bowl's too small, uh, so we're going to mix it in that one. So, once pepper in as well, generous with the pepper. Um, it's got some time in the garden, but. I'm on a rush. I've been out all day and I want to go swimming. So I don't want to be giving myself too much to do. So that and then uh, free running table salt because uh, if we use rock salt, there'll be lumps of rock salt in it and I want to season all the way through. So kind of two kind of big kind of pinches. Although this, the cheese is going to be salty, so that's kind of like fine. So that. All in there like that. It smells good. So yeah, so you can see the uh, pork mince isn't too fatty. And then we want an egg. Uh, it's a big egg. Normally I'd use a medium egg, so it's a larger egg um, for 101.2 kilos. But I reckon, I think the recipe that I was looking at before uh, was 700 grams, and it was like a medium egg. So I'm reckoning one egg, a larger egg, for uh, 1.2 kilos. It's an ish kind of recipe. I'm not going to bother mixing it. I'm just going to put that in there like that. Oh, it's going to go pretty pots, which is way over there, out the way. And then it's a case of hands in, mix around, and we'll. I'm going to over mix it uh, so it's uh, a little bit more combined than usual because we want things to uh, hold together. So, uh, shall I pause? Because it's just going to make. No, I'll just do it. I get concerned about that video has been a bit too long, but I'm not going to beat the egg. Hopefully, the mixing of all the ingredients together is going to be kind of enough. Um, and then I'm probably making too much with this, but it was I was making ba I'm making bacon for Christmas, so I don't know when I'm going to put this video so it's going to be out. But I was making bacon for Christmas, and these are all the offcuts from the pork bellies. Just kind of trimmed up a little bit. There's some flat, flappy bits on the on the pork bellies, which aren't really suitable for making bacon so I'll cut those off and then kind of square it off a little bit and then all the excess meat off the ribs and all that kind of stuff gets gets mixed up so it's probably more meat than I actually need for this recipe uh, more meatballs so I'm gonna um, it's not meatballs it's meatloaf type of thing so it's gonna be I'm gonna roll I'll roll the rest any kind of spare meat I'll roll into meatballs and cook in some tomato sauce which I'm making at the moment but See, last year I just made loads of meatballs from all the off cuttings from the bacon and there was just too many and it was like a day's worth of work faffing around with it all. I don't want to do that again so I thought we'll have a go at this. So 
so we're going to overwork it. When people make beef burgers and things, they talk about not overworking the meat, but you know, I'm not really bothered about that. I think, you know, if someone can't really give me a good enough reason why we don't do something, um, we're just going to have a play around and see. So, if you just want to make meatballs, these are delicious and they kind of make really good meatballs. Certainly they add in the addition of cheese, makes them taste delicious. So, like a meatball size, so that's if you want to turn this into meatballs, but we're not. We're going to turn this into, I reckon, about half of it. About that much. Let's weigh that. We're not making a mess of everything. So. That's 930 grams, so what does that little one weigh? Okay, I, I think the, the amount of cheese that I've got kind of is going to dictate how much I make. So, okay, so do half this. So that's, I'll take this away at 50. Take this one to weigh at 50. That's 840. Also, I've got bits in the bottom. So that there, that there. And just that. It's just over. So. We can use half this mixture for this thing that we're going to roll up. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm thinking my way through things as always, so that out of the way. We'll roll it on some paper. I don't want to make a mess of the board, and I don't want to. Yeah, I think that's going to be a suitable amount. So it's 850, so it's half the amount. I don't want to make a mess of my chopping board. I have a feeling. I have a feeling that this is going to split open when I bake it. So let's get a little bit of paper on top. And I don't know. Nope. Need to wash my hands. Should have had a bit of paper, a bit of paper ready, shouldn't I? But no. So the amount of cheese that I've got, I think it's going to dictate how much filling I've put in. Well, how much meat I should have used. I reckon that'll be about right. I'm looking at what the cheese that I've got that I've pre-sliced. I'm looking at that and I kind of think that's about right. right. So, a little bit of baking powder and grease with paper on the top. And then we should be able to roll out a little bit better. And then we'll just square it off with a bit. I did have a rolling pin. I did have a rolling pin. I'd have got it out. So, I could have just, it's Saturday today, and I could have just left this, left this and cooked it on Sunday, but I quite like something nice to eat on Saturday night. I think it's a bit of a celebration. I'm not really a Sunday dinner type of person. I think if we're going to have something nice, I always kind of want it to be on a Saturday night. together a little bit and kind of see how we go. It looks about bigger than the board. Don't want it bigger than the board. So hopefully the egg and the breadcrumb will keep it all together. And we just need to kind of decide. So I kind of want more in that corner. So hopefully we'll just be able to draw a bit across that way, and then draw a bit that way, draw a bit up that way. So in like a normal like a meatloaf, you just kind of, that's better, you just lump it all into a, into a, into a container and square it up. And it's like a big log, like a uh, cooked pate that you do in the oven. But this is more going to be, so we're going to layer some filling on it and then we're going to roll it up like that. So, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? Let's just do it!
let's just do it. So we've got two mozzarella balls. I'm not going to be able, I normally just kind of put things in the oven and then go out. We're not going to be able to do that today. It's just cheap supermarket mozzarella balls. Um, I was I was chatting to a friend yesterday, and we were we were talking about. Um, expensive ingredients and then and I'm do you know if you can afford expensive ingredients they make dishes taste nicer you know there's no there's no two ways about it but just because but my philosophy kind of is that just because you can't afford expensive ingredients doesn't mean that you can't have really nice food we just have to try a little bit harder with cheaper ingredients um I just kind of think it's a bit it's a bit is it is it lazy I don't know does that need to be more no, that'd be fine. That's kind of it's dead easy. It's e easier just to buy expensive ingredients and make something taste nice. I think it takes a little bit more skill to buy something cheaper and turn it into something nice. But it was just the type of kitchens that I worked in that were more inclined to do that type of thing. Certainly, more I worked with chefs who were concerned about their their gross profit and would be paid a, a bonus on the, uh, on the on their gross profit. You know, and the and the more profit they made, the bigger bonus they would get, which kind of works a, a little bit the wrong way because then you get chefs kind of cutting all kinds of corners, which I don't kind of believe in. Um, I don't think you should you shouldn't rip off your customers. Uh, so uh, we're going to run it that way. So do I want to cut across? I want to cut across that. Yes, I think so. I don't know how, how much. So you won't have your own cured ham. Uh, you'll have to buy uh, what's it called? Pamaha, that type of thing. So that that way. So I think we're going to cut that way. I think it'd be better than cutting that way. I think. I think. I'm just thinking of of, of how we cut the meat. How much did I say that way? Did I say it weighed anything? Yeah, so we've got about 50 grams, 50 grams worth of, let's call it parma ham. It's not, it's just cured bacon, but it's really thinly sliced. You can see how thin the slice is, you can see, you can see through it. So we've got about 50 grams, I don't know what are they, are they 125 grams worth of cheese in the bowls, I think, I think. Then, so I probably should have put more filling on, but I want that. Yeah, so ah, yeah, so that's kind of worked out quite well. Uh, yeah, if it's going to split open this, then it won't split open because I've left that bigger gap uh, without the filling there. There's going to be more of the meat for it not to split through. So then kind of do that on the edge so the filling doesn't want to stuff out fall out too much. And then hopefully the egg in this will stop it from from one of the collapse. What normally happens when I do things like this it wants to split across there. Uh, but hopefully the cheese and the egg will kind of hopefully bind it all together. Probably could have done with another egg in there. Hurts. We're only faffing about, aren't we? And there's only me eating this. Unless someone wants to come out for tea. Um, so that's that. So then I'm going to put it in. We'll, we'll, um, I'm going to cook it when I come home because it'll, it'll be cooked in about 40 minutes, something like that. So, um, and I'm, be, I'm going to be out swimming longer than that. Um, so uh, I'll put it on a tray, put it in the fridge, and then I'll cook it when I get home. Um, 220 degrees, something like that. I so, saw uh, when I did my little bit of research. I don't do much research. I'd much rather get on with it. So that's about right. And then the tomato sauce. I'm cooking some tomato sauce to, to kind of have with it. So the trimmings of the bacon have gone in there, and the trimmings of the hard cheese have gone in there as well. So that's going to be a lovely sauce. And then all those bits of 
Now all those bits uh, will turn into some uh, porky meatballs and then we'll put those in jars and then they can sit in the cupboard and be eaten at a later date when I can't be bothered cooking. So, put it in the fridge, chill it down, hopefully it will set up a little bit and then when we put it in the oven it won't uh, split open. But if it splits open, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter does it? So, I'm going to put it in the oven and I was thinking really I should have put Oh, but I don't feel quite right. I should have put another egg in the mixture, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. I, I kind of think, yeah, I think there should be another egg in that. Uh, so I'm highly anticipating that that's going to split across there. But it'd be right. We'll see how it turns out. Right, it smells ready. So let's have a look. Wow, look at that. That looks good, doesn't it? That's, cer that's uh, certainly coloured because of the uh, of the cheese and the egg in it. I'd like to take a picture of that. I'd like to take a picture of that. So let's, let's get it off the, out the tray onto the board. No, there's lots of juice in the bottom of there. I don't know where it's that. Hmm. Let's hope it doesn't spill everywhere. Let's hope it doesn't spill everywhere. Let's get that out of the way. Still haven't fixed the oven up. Maybe one day. So it hasn't split. And it's gone lovely and brown. But anyway, so I'll take a picture. Yeah, not a particularly good picture. My eyes are obviously better than my camera. Right. Let's have a carve into this. I'm going to carve it. Let's carve. There, and we can have a look. Hopefully we've got the spiral. Hopefully we've got the spiral. Yeah, okay, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of. I'm going to squeeze a bit of the cheese out for the sake of the camera when we take a picture. But what does it taste like? What does it taste like? It's certainly a lot more interesting than a that picture. It's certainly a lot more interesting than a the meatloaf, isn't it? With either cheese and bacon. Mmm. Smells real hot. That's delicious. That is. Absolutely delicious as that. I mean, obviously I use pork mince, but beef mince would be fine. Um, so, yeah, bacon if you can afford it. Um, well, prosciutto, um, pam ham, ideally. The better quality, the better. But cheap stuff is fine. Cheap mozzarella, fine. But better quality, that's fine. But you could you could use normal bacon, um, like some thin bacon in it, and uh, cheap mozzarella from the supermarket. Cheapest mince that you can get your hands on, and then the rest of it. That is absolutely delicious. That you know, if I was served that instead of a Sunday roast, I'd be thoroughly happy. That's really nice. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. That's sensational. That's a winner, is that? Um, and I think there's there's plenty of scope as well. So I'll probably have another go at it um, in the future, and we'll kind of do we'll kind of do different things. Um, so 
uh, there's like a rustic farmhouse pate um, where you make pate but you put it in a container that's lined with bacon and then bake it in the oven and let it go cold I think we could do the same with this I think we could we could put um, bacon on the outside or um, parma ham or something like that and I think that would be kind of interesting and then we could put other things on the inside um, yeah yeah I think would always put in more cheese in I think it would actually I think it, it held together kind of quite well so there wasn't any kind of split so that's kind of like right, right kind of ratio of meat to egg to fat to cheese to to breadcrumbs um, yeah that's delicious I'm gonna enjoy that on my Saturday night